Welcome to Embedded World 2022. I'm here with uh, Steve Douglas, Corporate VP of Research and Development of Lattice Semiconductor. Steve, can you just tell us something about the Lattice vision for the future? Absolutely. Um, Lattice is focused on a technology called FPGAs. These are a programmable hardware technology that allows customers to not only design their hardware, customized for their particular application, but there are, it enables them to reprogram it over time and they can make modifications to their design with time. They're very power efficient and they come in very small form factors. They're perfect for edge applications uh, such as industrial uh, automation uh, types of applications. We're in uh, automotive electronics. We're also found in laptops and servers. Uh, yes, we're in virtually every marketplace there is because the uh, the flexibility of programmable hardware really has benefits across all markets and, and the need uh, for uh, FPGAs continues to grow with time because uh, technology is advancing so rapidly, especially uh, the advent of things like artificial intelligence. We're adding more smarts to all the equipment that's out yeah. there and those algorithms are changing so rapidly. So it's like as soon as you build your hardware, it becomes obsolete by the day you have it ready to ship. And yeah. so NFPGA allows customers to do an initial design and then refresh it and update it and keep pace with all those advances in technology. Okay, so that's, that sounds good. Now, I think it seems that FPGAs have been considered quite niche up to now. Can you see them becoming more mainstream therefore? Yes, um, I think FPGAs for quite a while um, have really been targeted on certain types of applications and a lot of the market was really focused on large FPGAs, high-end FPGAs. What are the biggest, fastest FPGAs we can make? Because they were focused on um, what I call heavy iron communications, wired and wireless uh, comms infrastructure. And there is also a lot of focus on data center uh, uh, over the last few years. You know, there's a lot of compute uh, challenges in the cloud, and so FPGAs have been used as a hardware accelerator. Those chips are very large, they, they're very high performance, but they burn a lot of power, and they're very expensive. So they were, they're limited in uh, the applications that they can serve. But with Lattice technology, like our now industry-leading power-efficient Nexus product family, um, we are uh, building FPGAs that are very power-efficient for a very wide range mainstream set of applications. In fact, we're designed into uh, client laptops. And really? yes, we're used as a, uh, a a uh, low power mode device. Uh, we stay on all the time and we do uh, human presence detection algorithms. So if uh, if a user is you know looking away from their screen or they've walked away, it allows the laptop to go into a power down mode and save a lot of power. And then when somebody walks up or they look at the screen again, it powers back on and the processor comes up to speed. Um, we burn a very small amount of power to do that, like tens of milliwatts, uh, but we have the AI algorithms running on our FPGA to do that. If those were run on the CPU of the processor, it would burn a lot more power yeah. and would run the battery life down yeah. on those devices. So by using just a very small FPGA uh, in uh, the system, it allows uh, the laptop battery life to be extended by like 50%. So that's just one example yeah. of how FPJ technology can be used in a very mainstream application, technology that we all use today. And therefore using, becoming a lot more useful with sensors and other type of products, yes. working yes. with them to achieve that. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, as people build more and more devices out on the edge, they're equipping them with more and more sensors temperature sensors, thermal sensors. Uh, there's a lot of video sensors out there too. Yeah. Embedded vision is everywhere. Everyone's got a camera and it's generating all kinds of data that needs to be yeah. processed. Now, you know, when edge devices first started generating all this data with sensors, they, they'd look at it uh, a little bit, do some processing and then send it off to the cloud and all the processing will be done off in the cloud. But now, there's so much real-time processing of the data that has to happen for these AI algorithms, that computation has to be done at the device. Yeah. And so, um, having FPGAs uh, there to implement those algorithms locally gives a lot of flexibility uh, for customers who are building systems with a lot more sensors. Right. So. so fortunately, we don't have any of those in our cameras. So. <laughs>
<laughs> yet. <I'd>, yet. <laughs> yet. So I'd like to thank you very much for giving us that overview. Really do appreciate yes. it. It'll be good meeting you. My pleasure, Lorna. And uh, enjoy the conference here and look forward to seeing you around.